Every class at the Naval Academy has that legendary member, the one who made memorable stories from Plebe Summer that every member of the class can recite with a laugh, and often the one who went on to a unique career path. For the Naval Academy class of 1884, that was Philo McGiffin. To my right are instant shoulder marks from the 1880s. Shoulder marks were very similar to uh, the shoulder boards we see on Navy officer uniforms today. Uh, these were of uh, Philo McGiffin's period. In fact, the photo right above is of Philo McGiffin. Philo McGiffin was a graduate of the Naval Academy in 1882 and was known as a prankster. In fact, for more than a century, his stories would be recounted in reef points and other places. He's not taught so much today here at the United States, in the United States Naval Academy. Uh, but Philo McGiffin goes on to an extraordinary career. Because he had so many demerits, he graduated very uh, low to middle uh, range of his class. And at that time, after the Civil War, only about a t the top third or top quarter were offered a commission into the United States Navy. So Philo McGiffin, upon graduating in 1882, has two years where he's serving aboard a ship, the Hartford and another, sh and another ship. Uh, at the end of that time, uh, he's considered a, a past midshipman, but is not offered a formal commission in the United States Navy. So he seeks adventure elsewhere. He, he, he hears about a war between France and China. So he makes his way across the United States, across the Pacific Ocean on a steam uh, ship, and arrives on the last day, essentially, of the war. He is fired upon by a French ship. He arrives, and the war is over, and yet he goes to the commander of the Chinese Navy and offers that admiral his services. At the age of 24, Philo McGiffin helps found the Chinese Naval Academy. He trains for the next 10 years a new generation of Chinese naval officers. He handpicks them. And when the country goes to war in the, in the uh, Sino-Japanese War of, 18, of 1894, Philo McGiffin is given command of a Chinese battleship. It's the first time that a steam-powered uh, uh, modern warship is commanded by an American, but it's for an overseas government. Uh, he is severely injured during the battle, but he acquits himself extremely well along with his, uh, his officers, who are all Chinese except for one, and uh, comes back to the United States uh, a short while later. Philo McGiffin is not taught here, as I mentioned, but it's interesting because China is learning more and more about Philo McGiffin, the American who came to uh, fight for them and almost die for them. In fact, uh, the Hong Kong Maritime Museum has his uh, officer's uniform, a Chinese officer's uniform, as well as his US Navy sword and a number of other items that you can see on exhibit there today. Philo McGiffin was also uh, noted in a David Poyer book, for those who enjoy fiction. David Poyer is a graduate of the Naval Academy and uh, wrote a fiction series, but also wrote a side book called The Return of Philo T. McGiffin. Join us at the Naval Academy Museum to see these artifacts from the legendary Philo McGiffin and to learn about other distinguished graduates. Thanks for joining us for today's podcast.